Hey everyone, Pastor Kerry here. I'm coming to you from my rooftop where I'm checking out my chimney to make sure everything looks good for wood burning season because I do love my fall and winter fires. Now, this may seem like a pretty precarious place to deliver a message, but while I'm up here on this high place, I can't help but think of an instance in scripture that happened from a high place, a couple of them actually, and that is in Matthew chapter four and Luke chapter four where Jesus had been in the wilderness fasting for 40 days when he was approached by the devil to be tempted. And one of the things that Satan did was to take him to the top of the temple, a place probably about this high, and he enticed him to throw himself off, uh, citing a place in scripture that talked about how the angels would come to his rescue. But Jesus snapped right back with scripture that said, uh, you're not to tempt the Lord your God. Well, then Satan took him to an even higher place, showed him all the kingdoms of the earth, places the devil seemed to control, and they said that if only Jesus would bow down and worship him, Satan would offer him all those kingdoms. Once again, citing scripture, uh, Jesus said, you're to worship the Lord your God alone, and him only were to serve. Now, in each instance, the devil knew Jesus' power and authority, but he tried to attempt to use it in a way that was uh, selfish and unnecessary. But each time, Jesus combated that uh, temptation in the same way and with the same weapon, and that was by using God's word. In fact, when the devil first approached Jesus and tempted him to get something to eat by turning rocks into bread, Jesus said, human beings don't live by bread alone, but they need every word that God speaks. And the way that Jesus refuted and resisted the temptation from the devil himself is an example to us of how we too can overcome sin and temptation in our lives. In fact, Proverbs chapter seven, I believe verses two and three says, guard my words as your most precious possessions, write them down and keep them deep in your heart. Because knowing God's word is the key to success in every aspect of life. Joshua 1.8, in fact, says that by meditating on God's word, that's the way to find uh, true prosperity and success. In Psalm 119, that talks uh, all about the word. It says that that's the way we overcome sin and temptation. In John chapter 14, that talks about the Holy Spirit being with us. It says by having God's word in our hearts, it gives the Holy Spirit something to remind us of. And then in Ephesians 6, it talks about the armor of God. It says that our most potent weapon is the sword of the Spirit, which is God's word. And then 1 Peter chapter 3 says that when we have God's word in our minds, uh, we're always able to give people a reason for the hope that we have. But in order for God's word to have those positive effects in our lives, it needs to get deep down inside of us more than it can just in hearing good preaching or teaching on Sunday or even in the time that we spend day to day in God's word on our own. We need to get to the point that word is getting into our mind and into our spirit so it's right there in specific situations when we need it. But in order for that to happen, we need to learn to do as the scripture says, to meditate on God's word. Now meditation has gotten kind of a bad rap from a lot of Eastern religions and other practices where uh, meditation is some kind of mystical mellowing out process that gets us in touch with our inner selves. Well, that's not what meditation is at all in the scriptural sense. It's a lot more practical and it kind of gives the picture of like uh, something we may understand being from Iowa, how a cow chews its cud. You know, they get some grass and they start chomping and chomping and chomping and then they swallow it into one of their four stomachs and then they hock it back up again and they chew on it some more and chew on it some more, swallow it and then up again and chew on it some more. And that may be kind of gross, but that's kind of the picture of meditation where we take a part of God's word and we just ponder it over and over and we chew on it, we think on it, we consider uh, what God is saying to us and what it means and ultimately how it applies to our lives so it can really make the difference that God intends. And that's what it means to meditate on God's word. Right at the very beginning of the Psalms in, in uh, verse two and three, it says those who are always meditating on God's laws uh, are like trees planted by the riverbank. They bear uh, fruit in their season, they never wither and whatever they do, Prospered. That's a, that's the a kind of life I want to live. Now, the practical side of all this is that from now on, whenever you hear God's word uh, preached or taught, or especially when you spend your own time digging into the word, don't just let it pass in one ear and out the other, or you look at it for just a little while, but take something from that sermon or, or teaching or from the passage you read, a specific verse or promise or challenge, and chew on that thing for a while. Highlight it in your Bible. Uh, write it down somewhere, put it on a, a, a note in your device or, or tape it to your mirror dashboard, somewhere where it's gonna uh, keep it in front of you. That way you can begin to ponder that passage over and over and think about you know, how it relates to your life, 
you know, what it says about God, how it can, can change you or increase your faith and make you more like Jesus. And do this until that passage really gets into your memory. So it sticks longer than just the few minutes that you hear it in a sermon. So it, so it stays in your mind and it's right there on the, the tip of your tongue whenever you need to remember it or recite it to yourself to, to increase your faith. And then, uh, just like Jesus, those words are going to become a powerful weapon against Satan's lies and attacks, but also an effective tool to build your faith and character in a way that not only affects your life, but hopefully influences a lot of others as well. So don't let God's words slip in and out of your mind. Take it in, uh, ponder it, think on it, wrestle with it, get it into your mind and heart so it can have the powerful effect in your life that Jesus intends. Anyway, I better get down from here where it's a little bit safer. Don't worry about me. I was a painter for years. I'm up in high places, so it doesn't bother me too much, but uh, I probably still ought to get down from here before my wife gets home. <laughs>